so here you see uh, Egesthus complaining to Zeus uh, <coughs> against his treatment as opposed to that of Orestes. He says that uh, uh, I am dearer than Agamemnon. I know <coughs> it is Orestes whom you cherish. You allowed me to work my doom. You let me rush in axe in hand to King Agamemnon's bath, and no doubt you watched from high Olympus, licking your lips at the thought of another damned soul to gloat over. But today you are protecting young Orestes against himself, and I whom you egged on to kill his father, you have chosen me to restrain the young man's hand. I was a poor creature, just qualified for murder, but for Orestes it seems you have higher destinies in view. So, uh, Egisthus realizes that he was only a tomb in the hands of Zeus or in the hands of superior powers when he killed Agamemnon. So, you see that he thinks that he did not have agency. He committed the act, but he was driven to it by some other power. Now, if we accept this argument of Egisthus, so let us say that the other power is not God, but actually somebody's instinct, drive, desire, libido. Uh, if we accept this argument, then we'll have to excuse every murderer, every rapist, because they would say that it was not them, but the agency or the responsibility lies with something else or somebody else. Uh, but it is also an indication that uh, people are not free uh, in the sense that they are overpowered by emotions, desires and so on and so forth. Therefore freedom consists in the ability uh, to curb these overpowering desire and freedom consists in believing in other people's freedom. So as long as you want to harm another person or you want to oppress another person, you are taking away his freedom, then you also cannot have freedom. So we can explain this uh, existential philosophical concept uh, in terms of everyday application in life also. So if we do bad things to others, then we also lose the right of other people being good to us. So it is not a one-way street, which means that we must be responsible for our actions because our actions will determine whether we will be free or not, whether uh, the society will be free or not. And we cannot abrogate freedom to ourselves, depriving others of freedom. So as long as there are peoples who are slaves, there are peoples who are tyrants. And tyrants are not free in the true sense of the term, because they are, they are uh, forced to be or they are contained in the role of being tyrants. So this dialectic between opposing forces, there is another uh, Hegelian uh, logic or dialectic of the master and slave. Hegel uses the metaphor of master and slave. So something always tries to dominate another thing and things stand in relationship of master and slave. So as long as we believe in this kind of an equation, we can't have a free society. We can't have free men. Right. So Sartre presents this idea by showing this dispersion in Egisthus when he blames Zeus that 
Zeus did not stop him from being a murderer. But he is, uh, he still supposes that he is protecting Orestes. Now we know that that is not true because uh, Zeus has no power over Orestes as he will confess a little later because gods do not have any power over men who know that they are free. So if we interpret this parable by saying that people who know that they must assert their freedom by not oppressing others, such people cannot be oppressed either. Uh, in the true sense of the term. So, we see this in operation in everyday life. There are always people, some people, some good people, who try to free others from oppression. And these people are sometimes tortured by the state machinery. But they realize, I mean, they, they think, they believe in their freedom. And oppression cannot take away that belief in freedom from them. So however much the state machinery might try to oppress them, it fails because these people do not believe that they are not free. So actually the gods cannot oppress men who know that they are free. <clears throat> then see what you have made of me, unjust god that you are, and tell me this, if today you hinder the crime Orestes has in mind, why did you permit mine of 15 years ago? So you are trying to prevent Orestes from being a murderer by telling me to stop him. But 15 years ago I became a murderer. Then you did not stop me, but you prompted me. Therefore you are an unjust God. So what Isthus is doing here is that he is shifting his responsibility to Zeus. That is the mentality of a slave. A slave always says that I failed in something because my master did not guide me. He always shifts his or her responsibility. Uh, all crimes do not displease me equally. It is this, I shall speak to you frankly as one king to another. The first crime was mine, I committed it when I made man mortal. Once I had done that, what was left for you poor human murderers to do? To kill your victims. Do you know what would have befallen Agamemnon if you had not killed him? Three months later he would have died of apoplexy in a pretty slave girl's arms, but your crime served my ends. The idea here is that People commit crimes for which they blame the gods. They never take the responsibility. So what Zeus says here is ironical. He says that I made man mortal, therefore men always kill one another. And. Uh, <coughs> The crime that you committed, that serves my ends. So, there is a overall, an overall design of a God in the uh, development of events. That is what Zeus proposes here. And he, you know, addresses Zeus as a king, speaks to him as one king to another. So the purpose is to indicate the nexus of power between politics and religion 
together they want to oppress the people and uh, Zeus wants Aristheus to feel that he shares power with him therefore he is also to some extent responsible for the actions for the developments what ends for 15 years i have been atoning for it and you see it served your ends uh, it is because you were atoning for it that it served my ends i like crimes that pay i like yours because it was a clumsy boorish murder a crime that did not know itself a crime in the antique mode more like a cataclysm than an act of man so there lies the difference between the murder by a murderer or an oppressor uh, which is an ignorant primitive act of mindless killing and the murder by say a revolutionary or a soldier who knows why he is murdering or killing somebody who kills somebody with a purpose to restore justice uh, to restore order and so on so there is a difference between one type of killing and another type of killing um, then to further clarify that religion and politics they are hand in hand in oppressing man zeus tells isistheus uh, look at me i told you were made in my image each keeps order you in argos i in heaven and, uh, and on earth and you and i harbor the same dark secret in our hearts so uh, the uh, reflection of this idea of the uh, echo of the religious idea that man is made in god's image and uh, kings sometimes proposed as the stuarts kings of england sometimes proposed that kings are made in god's image or they serve the role of gods on earth and so on so sars uses these to suggest that the uh, oppressive powers they always want to appear as gods is this thus i have no secret you have the same as mine the bane of gods and kings the bitterness of knowing men are free so the knowledge which they suppress from men what knowledge that they do not have any right to oppress anybody so whether a king or a god or a powerful person when he oppresses somebody he oppresses him with the knowledge that he has no right to do it that he is doing it uh, doing something wrong because every man is free and every man has equal right to live and to prosper so all those who are oppressors or rulers they always have a sense of guilt this is the secret that they you know hide they do not let people know that they are free yes it is so they are free but your subjects do not know it and you do uh, why yes if they knew it they would send my palace up in flames for 15 years i have been playing a part to mask their power from them so people's power people have the power to remove the rulers but they do not know it or they do not want to exercise it but it is to says i have been trapped in my own net i have come to see myself only as they see me 
I peer into the dark pit of their souls, and there, deep down, I see the image that I have built up. I shudder, but I cannot take my eyes off it. Almighty Zeus, who am I? Am I anything more than the dread that others have of me? So, by oppressing others, Zeus has also become a slave to this ideology. and has started believing in this image that the people have about him the image of an oppressor the image of a ruthless tyrant and he cannot fight against this image though he wants to be free of it similarly zeus says that i can see this hideous image of me that people have built and i can do nothing about it it is still alas but who has doomed us no one but ourselves for we have the same passion you which is still have like me a passion for order for order that is so it was for the sake of order that i would cry to nestor for order that i killed my king I wish that order should prevail, and that it should prevail through me. So, the oppressors take upon themselves the logic, the argument, or the burden that they are keeping order. Uh, there was disorder everywhere. They are the deliverers. they have come to keep order something uh, which we can see very easily happening in our neighboring country so those who have used up power they say that we have come to uh, restore order because there was oppression there was corruption we are the deliverers so that is the logic that Oppressors always take. Then uh, Zeus tells Isthus about the plot of Orestes and Electra. Isthus, are they so dangerous? Orestes knows that he is free. So that is the greatest danger that a ruler can imagine. If the subject believes or subject knows that he is free, because the ruler is nothing but another man and he cannot dominate or oppress anybody but he does not tell people that they are free so people believe that they are slaves or they are subjugated he is still eagerly he knows he is free then to lay hands on him to put him in irons is not enough a free man in a city acts like a plague spot you will infect my whole kingdom and bring my work to nothing almighty zeus why stay your hand why not fell him with a thunderbolt so he suggests that zeus himself can do it he is almighty fell him with a thunderbolt then in a muffled voice zeus says it is zeus the gods have another secret yes once freedom lights in its beacon in a man's heart the gods are powerless against him it is a matter between man and man and it is for other men and for them only to let him go his gait or to throttle him so a man who knows that he is free there is no superior force who can keep him back excepting men men who are rude ignorant they can throttle another man by crude violence because they do not want any logic they do not uh, accept or they do not hear any argument okay so once a man knows his freedom then gods are powerless which means that there is no superior force 
which can stop a man if a man knows that he is free only men who are not superior but who are ignorant and aggressive they can throttle him that is they can kill him perhaps but killing does not make any difference in the man's conviction that he is free and then we see that electra and orestes they appear on the scene and uh, we will see that the actual murders will now take place we throttle him be it so well i shall do your will no doubt but say no more and stay here no longer i could not bear it and then electra leaps forward and rushes to the door orestes come for, comes forward strike him down don't give him time to call for help i will bar the door so we see that electra is actively participating uh, in the case of the murder of isistheus but in the case of clytemnestra she does not participate and orestes does it all alone so you young man are orestes defend yourself i shall not defend myself it is too late for me to call for help and i am glad it is too late no i shall not resist i wish you to kill me so we see that isistheus also wants to be delivered from his role as an oppressor he also secretly wants to be free but he cannot free himself so orestes can free him by killing him little i care how it is done so i am to be a murderer orestes strikes him with his sword so orestes does not care about this you know subtleties uh, whether he still defends himself or not he will kill him anyway why will he kill him because he believes that that is right is he still tottering after orestes strikes him uh, how you are uh, you struck well orestes let me look at you is it true you feel no remorse remorse why should i feel remorse i am only doing what is right what is right is the will of god you were hidden here and you heard the words of zeus zeus does not think that it is right to kill his zeus what do i care for zeus justice is a matter between men and i need no god to teach me it so it is uh, here not just a question of atheism that is believing in god or not believing in god but it is a question of human beings taking agency that is if we believe in god we always you know shift our responsibility to the gods but human beings if they want to be free they must also accept responsibility and take up agency so freedom comes with responsibility it is right to stamp you out like the foul brute you are and to free the people of argos from your evil influence it is right to restore to them their sense of human dignity so we see that orestes takes up agency by defying the god and he takes up in the cause of the people not for his sake of taking revenge this is his pain what agony look look he is sowing his face had gone quite gray what an ugly sight is a dying man keep silent let him carry with him to the grave no other memory than the memory of our joy my curse on you both then uh, the last words of Egisthus beware of the flies or stress beware of the flies all is not over so we know that according to the plot of greek tragedy 
in humanoids uh, the flies they uh, take oresters and electra to help the flies are the furies and the furies are agents of punishment but here we see the attitude of oresters is different regarding the flies and then after killing ejestius he wants to complete his task by killing clytemnestra uh, and tells electra now lead me to the queen's room orestes what she she can do us no more harm so electra doesn't want to kill the queen Uh, even though she had been dreaming for all these years of killing both Ejestheus and Clytemnestra, but at this moment she vacillates. What of it? What has come over you? This is not how you spoke a little while ago. Orestes, you too have changed. I hardly recognize you. Very well, I will go alone. So, uh, what is the point here? Uh, why does Electra vacillate, whereas Orestes is determined? The point is perhaps that freedom is difficult to uh, to assert. It is difficult to assert one's freedom uh, because. It, uh, if you want to assert your freedom, you must also accept your agency. That is your responsibility. And uh, Clytemnestra uh, is afraid of taking the responsibility of. Sorry, uh, Electra is afraid of taking the responsibility of killing a woman uh, who is. Uh, unarmed who cannot protect herself so even though that woman was evil and even though she uh, plotted with Isthus in the murder of her father and uh, she cherished her death and she wanted to take revenge for so many years yet uh, at the final moment she recoils from taking up agency Uh, which suggests that freedom has its cost. The cost is that uh, you will have to take responsibility for some actions uh, which may not be palatable. So, if you take up some cause, then there would be, uh, you know, some uh, some actions you would be compelled to take. Which may not be desirable or palatable. So, Electra is not as committed to freedom as Orestes. That is why she vacillates. So, through this, Sartre also projects the idea that freedom is a difficult concept in the sense that it is very difficult for man to assert his freedom. Man is most of the time a slave either to some desire or to some idea or to some you know superior force it is very difficult for man to accept responsibility to take up agency and commit everything that is necessary for this cause so orestes does not think how clytemnestra would react when he would kill kill her but electra cannot but think that clytemnestra is a weak woman and so on will she scream he is walking down the passage when he opens the fourth door oh i wanted this to happen and i want it now i must want it so electra feels that it is right for her to desire Clytemnestra's death because she plotted in the killing of her father but 
must want it and uh, really want it there is a difference because at this moment she does not want it anymore but she thinks that it is right for her to want it she looks at it is this that one yes he is dead so this is what i wanted i didn't realize how it would be she comes closer to the body and then uh, it is this dead it is this that his eyes open and she covers his eyes because because she can't bear the consequences of the action she can't look at the dead body that woman is still alive she is in her bedroom and presently she will be screaming screaming like an animal in pain no i can't bear those eyes any longer what was it then i wanted what then platonista screams he has struck her she was our mother and he has struck her she rises to her feet it is done my enemies are dead for years and years i have reveled in the thought of this and now it has happened my heart is like a lump of ice was i lying to myself all those years no that is not true <coughs> it can't be true i am not a coward only a moment ago i wanted it and i have not changed i am glad glad to see that so i am lying at my feet so we see that <clears throat> electra is kind of conflicted she knows that <clears throat> she had uh, cherished the murder of both isistius and platonestra but when that actually happens then she cannot accept it but at the same time she is rejoicing so she is asserting that she has not changed which means that uh, she does not refute her desire her that her desire was legitimate of seeing both her both his thieves and platonista dead <clears throat> then uh, as orestes comes back she exclaims exclaims orestes oh you are frightened why i am not frightened i am drunk drunk with joy what did she say did she beg for mercy long then orestes refuses to tell him all the details so he says that well i have done it because it was my duty but i am not going to tell you all the details so some secrets i must keep with myself why doesn't he tell her because he knows that they will affect her she will not be able to bear the details of platonista's death now perhaps at this point uh, we may wonder uh, why does uh, orestes succeed in sticking to his purpose and killing isistius and platonestra whereas electra recoils electra is represented as weaker than orestes now is there any uh, latent belief that women are weak and therefore they cannot rise to the occasion uh, they have more of a nurturing role and therefore uh, they cannot be murderers so i do not know what uh, feminist uh, theory uh, would, would if feminist theory is applied what would be the outcome uh, about this but uh, in this sarth is close to shakespeare shakespeare also does not represent women as murderers uh, as you all know uh, in macbeth for example a lady macbeth uh, cannot commit the murder Shakespeare presents uh, women as having a nurturing role and therefore uh, thinks that it is inappropriate uh, to present women as murderers <coughs> so maybe sartre was old fashion uh, that is why he represents electra as recalling or maybe uh, since in uh, greek play orestes uh, you know commits the murders so he sticks to that 
uh, but I'm, I think that uh, his representation of Electra here as uh, recoiling a little, withdrawing uh, when the question of Platonist's murder arises, uh, has the purpose of representing not a contrast between man and woman, but a contrast between uh, one who can uh, assert freedom and one who cannot. <coughs> so, uh, because Electra cannot assert her freedom, she depends on Orestes for delivering everybody from the operation. So, she cannot be a subject in the true sense as long as she does not take up agency. So, the benefit of having twin protagonists is also uh, the scope of presenting a contrast between the reactions of the two protagonists as we have for example in Macbeth. Uh, but here we see that Electra is not uh, representative of weakness uh, in so much as she is a representative of uh, failure of will or assertion of freedom. Now we cannot uh, blame Electra too much because 99 of 100 people fail to assert their freedom. So uh, three people are not great in number. They are always limited in number and uh, we see that at the end of the play uh, both Orestes and Electra would be led to hell by the flies or the furies. Uh, but actually Orestes will not be led. Orestes will walk first and the furies will follow him. Which means that Orestes uh, creates his own destiny and uh, willingly goes to hell. But that is not the same with Electra. Uh, she is dragged to hell by the Furies. Uh, which means that Electra have, you know, experiences a greater punishment because of her fear, her lack of agency and so on. Orestes does not have this fear of the Furies. Orestes is not afraid of his future. Uh, he takes up agency. He accepts his future. He accepts that he has to go to hell. So there lies the difference uh, between him and Electra. Right. So uh, we have come to the uh, uh, almost uh, to the end of the scene. So Orestes says, "I am free, Electra. Freedom has crashed down on me like a thunderbolt." So thunderbolt does not crash on everybody. So freedom is a unique, you know, uh, experience. And when one is aware of one's freedom, then one feels very differently about the world. So Orestes feels that he is very different from others. Free. But I, I don't feel free. And you, can you undo what has been done? Something has happened and we are no longer free to blot it out. Can you prevent our being the murderers of our mother for all time? Which means that Electra feels guilt for being murderer of their mother. Whereas Orestes doesn't feel the same guilt. So 
So this guilt of Electra is a failure of will and reason also because rationally Platonestra has committed a crime by plotting the murder of her husband with another person and later marrying that person and living with him. Therefore, she would be punished by any law. So there is no reason to feel guilty for her execution of murder. But then why does Electra feel guilty? Because she cannot see the reason clearly. And even if she sees the reason, she is afraid to follow it. Her will falters. Therefore, in Electra's case, it is a failure of reason and will. Whereas, Orestes is able to pursue the reason ruthlessly and execute the action to its culmination, there is no failure of his will. So, Electra is not free. One cannot be free unless one makes a choice and accepts all the consequences of that choice. Orestes, do you think I would, uh, I would wish to prevent it? I have done my deed, Electra, and that deed was good. I shall bear it on my shoulders as a carrier at a ferry carries the traveller to the farther bank. And when I have brought it to the farther bank, I shall take stock of it. The heavier it is to carry, the better pleased I shall be, for that burden is my freedom. So Orestes took up this burden, this task, on his own. Nobody in Argos compelled him to do it. Nobody even requested him to do it. But he took up this burden on his own, which suggests that he completely freely decided to do it. So his freedom consists in making this choice. Only yesterday I walked the earth haphazard, thousands of roads I tramped that brought me nowhere. But they were other men's roads. Yes, I tried them all. The haulers' tracks along the riverside, the mule paths in the mountains, and the broad flagged highways on the charioteers of the charioteers. But none of these was mine. Today I have one path only, and heaven knows where it leads, but it is my path. So this is the assertion of his individuality, his freedom his agency when he says that it is my part. And then we see that the furies appear and Electra is afraid of them. Listen, the sound of their wings uh, is like a roaring furnace. And uh, Orestes says, what do the flies matter to us? So whereas Electra is terribly afraid of them, Orestes doesn't care. Electra, they are the furies Orestes, the goddesses of remorse. Now Orestes has no remorse, as we learned earlier, when he killed Isistheus. Therefore the furies cannot do anything to him. They are the goddesses of remorse. Electra has remorse. That is why the furies or the flies they punish her and then uh, people arrive and uh, they tell them to open the door. Clytemnestra's cries must have brought them here, come lead me to Apollo's shrine. So they will uh, take shelter in Apollo's shrine where they will be free from these men as well as from the flies. All right. So uh, we saw in this uh, scene uh, the actual murder and uh, the
the climax uh, of the play and uh, the ulterior message or the uh, interpretation of this murder and the interpretation of the different attitudes between Orestes and Electra uh, to this event uh, I have already explained to you.